Are there naming conventions for IDs that kind of like rules to make sense of a good way? Um, um, yeah, that's a real. That's actually a really good question. Um, uh, and I guess the answer is it sort of depends on what you're going to do with those IDs. In most commercial systems, systems that are you know in wide distribution, IDs are never seen by human eyes. They're assigned by the machine when, they, when the item is created, like on Slashdot. When you create the item, it assigns an ID. And you never see that, and you never have to look at it, and you never have to deal with it as a person. So therefore, an ID that says item one, item two, item three, item four, item five, in sequential order or something like that, making sure that you never duplicate the same number is going to be fine. But if you have to look at the code, which in this class we're going to have to, you're going to be looking at it in oxygen, you're going to be seeing all these IDs, then putting a little bit of semantics into those IDs is not a bad idea because you're actually kind of using them like titles. You look at an ID, it has to be suggestive of what it's the ID of. Otherwise, you quickly get lost. Can you write out, like, could you write the full title of the resort as the ID, or are you restricted to? Um, anybody restricted? answer that question? What are, the, what are the constraints of IDs? Uh -huh. Can start with number. No number. Can have space. No space. Okay. So, do you see what we did? You do you notice how slash dot dealt with that? How did slash dot deal with it? Yeah, right. Hyphens between all the words, or you could just smush out the space, right, and make it kind of like a camel case or something like that, right. So those are all possibilities. But if you do that, realize that over time your IDs and your titles are going to kind of diverge, right? Because you'll get new ideas about titles and you'll change your mind about a title, but you don't want to every time you change your mind about a title have to rewrite the ID. The whole idea of an ID is you assign it once and you forget about it. Okay? So the upshot is you can put semantics into your, into your IDs, but, don't just, but then don't expect that down the road it's always going to be really indicative of the title of that thing. And the title could change a lot in the meantime. Okay, so um, uh, we're going to want to switch yeah. in probably 10 minutes. Okay, so. so you're probably going to want to get those guys talking. Okay, so um, what else? So people who people who are in the middle of this exercise got questions, got problems, got tips and advice for people. Go ahead, Rob. I have a tip, and that's when you, can you go back to the, um, the static page that you have. And at first, I had um, was thinking about really focused on the information item. As you were modeling? No, once I was like, oh, I guess where does Asia react? Yeah. <laughs> right. I think your comment is, sorry, is, sorry. is better placed to when you're doing the transforms than when you're doing the instance. Yeah. And in fact, I would probably give people exactly the opposite advice at this stage, which is know what to ignore. Like, do I have to model, uh, let's see, so the word ads here? Where should I start? Right? This is the idea of boiler text that somebody was asking about earlier. This ad, the word ads is going to be there regardless of anything that's in my instance. How about the color? Do I have to model the fact that this is, you know, a, whatever that is, a puke kind of brownish, <laughs> whatever, right? No. Do I have to model these little dotted lines? No. Think about it this way. If you were, if you were doing this in Microsoft Word and you wanted to give a template to somebody else to do this, right, what would you put in there? Did you put in exactly the things about the colors of stuff, the layout, the lines, all that kind of stuff? And I'll be with you in just a second. And that's exactly the stuff we can ignore at this part, at this point, because it's not the information. It's the layout and the format of the information. So when I'm modeling a title, here's a title, I don't have to worry at all about the fact that it's going to be this color. Because for one thing, it might not always be this color. It could be any color. Right? What I've got to worry about is that it's the title. Yeah, Rob. I guess to read out what I was saying, actually, that's not what I meant, although I, that's good to ignore at this stage. I meant more yeah. that we were focused on the resort to not just forget to look at ah. the structural features of the page. But I'm <laughs> okay. trying not to say yes, that loud. I know. You're yeah. trying not to give the answer. Now I understand what answer yeah. you're trying not to give. Yeah, that's what okay. <laughs> and so, yes, that is a good point. There's more to, there's more to this info base than simply just ads and resorts. Right? So you've got to think about that a little bit. Okay. 
What else? Any other questions or, or problems? Anybody who's in this have a, are stuck anywhere? No? Okay. So hopefully you've got enough behind you, you've got enough under your belt to, um, uh, to, to be able to, to, to do this kind of exercise. Um, how about problems with the um, making a schema exercise? So that's another thing that's due this week, and that, hopefully that's really straightforward because that's a step-by-step -step progression making something more and more sophisticated. And that should take you through the ideas of making IDs with ID, uh, with ID data types, et cetera. Yeah? Actually, I just think going back so, to this. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure if it was a question, but I got, like, when we were thinking about, I was thinking about links. Okay. No, so the table is actually, like, would you be, like, chow separate? Uh-huh. Yeah. Just think about how to represent that. Right. I wasn't really sure. So link here, yeah. link there. Yeah. So do I have to put two links in my instance? No. See? So what? how many links do I need, really? And it's more like URLs, right? There's a URL that you'll go to when you click here, a URL you'll go to when you click here. And how many do I need in my instance? Just one. And then how am I going to get it to, how am I going to get it to be here and here? Yeah, doesn't get used up just because I put oh, it one place. Well, yeah, it was just I hadn't really thought of how to represent it because it's like part of this title. I don't know. I is it so part of the title? That's a great question. The I don't know. Is the I link, know. because the link is closely associated with the title here, you might be tempted to say the link is part of the title. The link is a child of the title, something like that. Would you be correct logically, not based on what it's, how it looks on this page, but logically? Is there a link between the title and the and you know the more information, the, the big resort page? Or is the link between the resort as a whole and the more information? See, so the presentation here is actually throwing you a little bit of a loop. It wants you to kind of believe, but then you'd have to put it as a child of this one as well. So that's an indication that something's messed up. But never, never, never underestimate your common sense. Does it make sense that it's actually the title that is linked? or the resort that's linked, right? So that's, a, that's an important distinction and it's a good one to keep in your mind. Think of what exactly, whose link is it? Whose title is it? Whose description is it? And that will give you a clear indication of parenting. Good, there was another question? Did you have a question? Oh, this was a step back to the making of the mistake That way, uh -huh. um, but I wonder if you could talk more about why that doesn't work. Um, so you you clicked on you clicked on. Link it to it, and then I would get a symbol next to you know title, for instance, and then there would be a title there, but it wouldn't necessarily. I don't even know if you could do that. If you what you're saying is, <laughs> um, here I am over in, in this instance, and I want to make this title global, right? So I say extract global element. And now it's global. And then I go down here and under contributor, I add a title. And I call it title, but I don't link it to the global element. Right, so it's stuck alone. And now I say extract global element? Is that what you're talking about? No, I actually just oh, found title No, it didn't. <laughs> From title itself, um, I had two titles, and then I went to the first one and made it and said add global. I didn't say extract. Well, oh, I see. You so said new global element, extra. you created a title, and then you said link this one to the global element, link that one to the global element. That, that could work. Yeah. You bet. But it didn't work. But it didn't work? <laughs> well, notice how this one didn't work. Because I already extracted it once, I can't extract it twice. Two globals with the same name just doesn't work. Okay, so let me let me turn you back over to um, uh, yeah, definitely because I need to get with these other guys. Um, turn you back over to uh, Casey in a minute. He'll run you through the um, the schema exercise where you're going to do progressively more and more difficult schema things. Okay, and then I will take the other guys up here.